Hey guys, this is Gatsby with Tape, and today you join me for episode 3 of um, more solar systems in uh, Kerbal Space Program, where we uh, use the working more solar systems mod to go into Stellar and do cool things. And we pick up where we left off last episode, which was um, with my ion probe that has just reached Dolas, a blue star in our galaxy. Um, and I want to go to this planet over here that is targeted, um, because it looks kind of... It looks kind of cool, it looks kind of Kerbin-like, although I'm pretty sure the atmospheric composition is uh, not not particularly habitable. But yeah, so I've got um, an encounter, I've got a close approach. If I do this burn, do a subsequent burn, and then a few and then a few orbits from then, which is actually quite a few years, I'll be in the right position to encounter this planet and do some cool things. So I've got a lot of big burns, um, but it's fine because I have an ion-powered spacecraft with a ton of solar panels and enough xenon gas. Um, to uh, power me for a while. I think this total full up has about 8,000 meters a second of delta V. Um, in future, I'm going to bring a little more because I found this actually a little limiting given how um, bashful I am. Um, you can see my mouse going crazy because this is at four times time accelerate. And I was uh, I was doing a few other things and um, that actually is a little odd. But yeah, this burn did take a while. So, you know, um, I did speed it up now because, uh, well, it did, it did, like I said, it took a while. It wasn't, it was surprisingly, it didn't take that long, but it is a little boring sitting through a burn so short. But yeah, now you're watching this at 16 times time accelerate with uh, four times in the game and four times post-production. Um, but yeah, we have almost done it. And now it's uh, we're in the same plane as the planet, which is good. So now it's just a matter of doing a prograde burn, I believe. Um, a pretty big prograde burn. Um, the flight control. I always forget that the flight control is just going nuts. But yeah, you can see there it's a pretty close approach. Um, I'm going to make sure I get an encounter, actually, just uh, so that... I have the most chance of actually getting to this planet. It's actually not as close as it looks. Um, so I'm just going to do a pretty big, just a pretty big burn here. Just uh, correct a little more, um, do some uh, burning radially, I think, to my orbit to get myself a close encounter with the planet. And if we get a little closer, which I don't think I will because I'm just kind of encounter planning right now. But you, if you saw the last episode, you know what this planet looks like. Um, and you can install this mod for yourself. I believe the link will... Probably be in the description, if not the first episode does have the link in the description. Or you can just type in more solar systems mod or working more solar systems mod for Kerbal Space Program. And you will find it. It is very easy to find things on Google. So before you ask in the comments, do try Googling it first. But of course, I'm always um, happy to, uh, you know, link you some pages. But anyway, uh, again, a 16 times time accelerate burn because of, uh, well, I didn't want to sit through it all and you don't want to sit through it all. So yeah, I, I sped it up because, you know, it's just a burn. Although it's not a burn, is it? Because it's an ion drive. It's more of, um, I don't know, what would it be? Because it's it's forcing ions out of a grid. Um, I've said this before quite a few times, but yeah, it, I guess it's ionization. Although the ionization isn't what moves it, it's the movement of electrons. Well, well not electrons, movement of ions. Probably using electric field, though, so... Yeah, again, I did actually study this um, once, uh, briefly, not like I studied it in university, because I have not been to university yet, I am just 18. Although, in three months, my AA, my A-levels will be over. I just discovered that today, well, realized that today, and was like, oh my god. Anyway, um, enough of my life. Um, I didn't realize um, that I was going to get an encounter with this gas giant there. Um, and you see I quick-loaded and quick say, well, I, no, I quick-loaded because I thought it was a mistake in the game. I was like, that seems unlikely, but no, it has a massive sw sphere of influence, and I was just in the right place at the right time. Um, although it doesn't look like it's moving, but it is actually moving just very, very slowly. And I do get an encounter, and it's a gas giant, and it looks pretty, and it has a couple of moons. So I decide, screw that other planet, we're going here. This looks awesome. It's weird coloring, and this is, I can get an encounter with this quite easily. It looks quite cool, and that also looks quite cool. Um... So I'm just going to try and explore the moons a bit. I don't have a lot of fuel. That was This kind of thing was not actually in my mission plan. Not that I really had a mission plan, but I had an idea. So yeah, this wouldn't really be in the mission plan per se. Um, so, it was, so, so yeah, it probably won't have enough fuel to do much exploring, but I could probably buzz at least one moon. Um, this, this time acceleration did take a long time, even at very high speeds. Um, and I will cut out any other time accelerations. I just wanted to kind of illustrate how long this takes. But in, during this time, I just took a look at some of these. Some of these moons, they do look quite cool. Um, they are, you will get a better look at them later, don't worry. I don't speed through all of this. But this bit was quite long and tedious, so you know. Um, some of the stats on the planets I was looking at were a bit weird. All the gravity was quite low and things. So yeah, I'm a little confused about the, uh, you know, makeup of these, uh, these planets burn and moons. Um, although planets and moons, fairly similar thing. 
Um, they're both, you know, it's just what they're orbiting, I guess. I mean, there are some things that make up moons. Moons are typically lighter. But if you had the Earth orbiting, um, uh, orbiting Jewel, it would not be a planet. It would be a moon. Um, because you, there is, I've forgotten which, uh, the one of uh, Jupiter's moons is actually not as, uh, is actually pretty big. I think it's nearly as big as Mercury. I've forgotten the name of it. Is it Ganymede? I may be wrong. It may be like Io or something. I don't know. I'm not very good with, <laughs> with remembering names of moons. But anyway, it's time to perform our retrograde burn, which did take a while, but it's fine because we have magic of four times time acceleration. Um, and yeah, and it does look quite nice with doing that burn. It is a little dark. Um, there are some darker parts of this video I have lit I have lit up. I will see if I can get the um, ambient light mod working for this, but I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, we we just need to get our encounter with the moon now. Uh, I've got the name of the moon actually. It's um, ooh, let's uh, okay. This one's Jabin. Oh yeah, Jabin. Well, Jabin. What a weird name. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go we're gonna go to Jabin. And I did cut through this because this took a while. Um, okay, I cut through this in a few seconds because this was a long descent. It's like a year of just falling towards a gas giant. I tried to take some gravity data, but it didn't really work because it hasn't been set up for this mod. But anyway, let's skip ahead now so that we can uh, get closer to the planet. Um, and you can see here we've got the um, all everything in view. We've got Dolas, the bl beautiful blue star, the gas giant masked by shadow. Um, we've got the Kuna, I think is the name of that other moon. Just above, um, just above Kaiser, which is the name of the gas giant, and we've got Jabin here. Um, yeah, so the gas giant is called Kaiser, I believe. Um, the Kaiser. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, fought, fought, fought the Kaiser. If the Kaiser had been a gas giant, we wouldn't have won World War One. Anyway, I've decided to start slowing down um, all the way up here because I know by the time I get down there, there's gonna be no time, and I don't have any, and I won't have any electric charge, although I do have some um, RTGs, but those will not be sufficient to power the Zion engine. I probably should have started slowing down much later, but I thought it makes sense just to slow down so that when I get to my periaps, I will be going slower and will have less um, less speed to bleed off, I guess, although I, I really should have waited until I was closer to the planet because uh, this was very inefficient, although I, there was no way of doing this efficiently. This is why I'm working on um, Solar um, ion powered spacecraft that do not use um, solar panels, just RTG powered ones, because they're much better. Anyway, I did desi decide to get a little closer to the planet before I finished off my burn, uh, so that I didn't, you know, be totally inefficient. And it does look quite beautiful there. You can't see it particularly well, but I did get some beauty shots a little later in the video. Um, I'm just thinking of where I can burn, because obviously behind the moon is gonna be is gonna be blocking me of sunlight. Um, and anywhere else is a little inefficient, but well, we'll do what we can. Um, again, this was never really meant to do uh, this sort of thing. It was meant to just like buzz one small planet, but it is going above and beyond. Um, but yeah, this was just again quite a long burn. But you have the you have the glory of seeing it at a sped up to four times time acceleration. But yeah, this is a weird looking planet. This whole place is pretty weird. This um the gas giant weird colors. Um, it looks like a kid's drawn it. Uh, uh, this moon, pretty weird colours, but I guess explainable through different, um, I mean, there's some green on there, I mean, that could be, uh, I guess, sulphur, um, yeah, I'm not so sure, no, sulphur's more of a yellow, I guess that could be the orange, but you do get various compositions, like sometimes, you know, coppers, um, a little bluish because of, uh, like, copper oxide, I think, because obviously, the copper tends to be more traditionally, um, uh, kind of a brownish sort of colour, but yeah, you, I don't know what these compositions of, Chemicals could be, I'm not a chemist, I'm a, well, I'm not a physicist, but I do study physics, but only at, um, only at A-level, so it, it's not that, uh, not that extensive, but it is pretty interesting. We were using E equals MC squared today to figure out the amount of energy that is given off by, um, nuclear fission. Um, so yeah, you know, we do interesting things. You should definitely study physics. I think physics is a good, um, is a good, uh, grounding for anything. Uh, as Elon Musk would say, even even business. Um, but anyway, I've decided just to burn anyway, because I do have RTGs, which will provide enough power to, you know, keep the engines on a bit, and it is quite efficient to burn here, so I thought I'd try and get my orbit around um, Jabin, but it doesn't look like we're gonna get it, so, um, yeah, we'll, we've got an orbit around Kaiser, though, we can mess around. And I did quite like this, the Dolas rise over Jabin, with um, Kaiser up there in the background, um, looking rather beautiful. Oh, I think there are some better looking planets in the Corbo system, which I will be going to a little more because I do quite like how they look. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to get some beauty shots. And as we leave Jabin, we will get some nice, nice, nice beauty shots of it because, uh, 
Well, you know me. I uh, I like my beauty shots. Um, I'm just flipping this around, going nuts, seeing if I can... I don't know what I was trying to do here. Probably just trying to get something that would look nice for a thumbnail. Although this isn't what I am going to use for the thumbnail. I have a plan for that. Although you'll probably know, because you've already seen the bit. Whoa! Oh no, I thought that was the, for a third moon there, but it was actually just the other moon. Um, I, I thought I'd missed a third moon. But anyway, as we leave, you can see the beautiful browns and purples and greens, which could be... Well, I'm not going to guess at more chemical, chemical compositions as I'm not particularly versed, but it does look rather beautiful. Um, although it does look like uh, there's a lot of terrain repeat down there if you look at it quite well. But yeah, it's a uh, rather nice looking moon. I'd like to send some probes here. I've, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some landing in the next episode, I think. Um, just landing things on here. Uh, or maybe not on here, but on various places. I'd also like to visit Corbo, which is a nice looking star. Um, and it has some nice looking planets on it. Um, this one, this system's got uh, less planets. But anyway, we do have ourselves an orbit around Kaiser. So I'm going to swing around the light side of it and take a take a little look at its um, its crazy storms. It's purple and green and blue storms. I, I wonder if this would ever occur, this sort of colouring on a gas giant. I doubt it, but I'm not sure. It seems too, um, I don't know, too, too vibrant. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there are gas giants that look like this somewhere. Um, I don't I don't know of anything that pink though, although it is maybe it's kind of like Eve's atmosphere and then a little above it's like Jules atmosphere and a little below it I don't know could be anything, but yeah, that is a rather beautiful looking gas giant Let's get ourselves a shot of that. That's probably gonna be the thumbnail, but I'm not entirely sure um, But yeah, that does look just just really awesome at first I was like that looks dumb But now it does look quite cool anyway moving on back to Kerbin This is something I'm I've been working on some new um, launch vehicle designs because I've actually been thinking a lot about reusable rockets, as I tend to. Um, and I was thinking if we're going to be using chemical rockets, we might as well try and reuse them. I'm not going to go crazy on this, but my thinking is if I can build an SSTO um, rocket, it's it's going to be quite easy. And it's very easy to build an SSTO rocket um, because of how small Kerbin is um, and how efficient the engines are, actually. Although the engines are massively efficient. But yeah, this is one of my first kind of designs. I mess around. I wanted it to all look cool. I don't want just basic looking rockets. And so, yeah, this has lots of outer boosters. These boosters don't break off. This is designed to be an SSTO. And probably the um, the smarter of you will be pointing out that you're losing so much thrust from cosine losses because your uh, engines are flared out. Yes, they are flared out, but they do provide some good control because if you think about it, they can gimbal and give me quite a good action on my, um, on my turning. I mean, it's not massively necessary and it's probably very inefficient, but I like how it looks and it does give me a good... A good control mechanism. But yeah, this is designed to be an SSTO because it's much easier to bring back an SSTO in Kerbal Space Program because it can wait in space until you're ready to bring it back. This does have quite a heavy payload, so um, we'll see how it does. Um, that is just kind of a heavy payload I picked just so uh, I could test it out. Um, but yeah, I want some heavy lifting SSTOs because I could build some, some SSTOs. I could build, I'm could i probably going to build some cool planes um, at some point, maybe. Um, and I could build some, easy, uh, some very easy SSTO rockets. Um, uh, that wouldn't really lift that much, but what's what's the point in that? I need heavy lifters, that's what I need, and I need them to be SSTOs so they're easy to reuse. Um, I might use something uh, kind of like the SLS in the meantime, because I know I can make that a reusable rocket. Um, and other than that, I mean, I, I guess just... I know this isn't career mode and it's not vital, but it's just a nice thing to do. This didn't quite make orbit. I mean, all, like if it had a few more meters a second of delta V, it would have made orbit, but... I decide, might as well deorbit it, because I don't want this cluttering up my space. Um, but yeah, I do quite like how this looks. It kind of looks more like one of those really big Russian rockets. So yeah, maybe that's uh, maybe that was my um, design sort of uh, inspiration. But anyway, I thought it would be cooler to watch it deorbit. Um, yeah, now we've uh, glowed this because I uh, glowed it, brightened it, and contrasted it. So it's not brilliant quality, but it's better than watching a black screen, because YouTube tends to compress things a little bit, which is fine. Um, everyone's always like, YouTube, you can press things. Well, the thing is, they've got a store, I think someone worked out about 240 terabytes of footage a day. And they do that for free. Um, well, not for free, they get paid. But, I mean, Google doesn't profit off YouTube. So, stop complaining. It's a brilliant service. And if you look at um, that new service, what is it? Um, oh, I've completely forgotten that new thing everyone's raving about, the uh, Vessel. Vessel. If you look at their HD video, it looks like shit. Um, so yeah, this is my protection of YouTube, because I do love YouTube. 
And they're also starting to take on Twitch, aren't they? The thing, if, if they make the live streaming as good as Twitch, I'd probably use it, just so I wouldn't have to go to another website. But anyway, enough just praising YouTube. Um, I did love how this looked when it burned up. No, when it, not when it burned up, when it re-entered, because I don't have deadly re-entry. So I left it at one times time accelerator. It did just look quite cool. But then we will speed uh, then I, well, Yeah, I was going to try and land this, basically. But then, um, then I ran out of electric charge. And everything was screwed, so uh, we're just gonna watch it hit the floor, oh, uh, hit the ocean horizontally. I wish it had hit the ground, it would look way cooler. But still, it looks quite nice as it slams into the ocean. Um, and it hopefully will look nicer, not in half resolution, which I have to watch it in because uh, of post-production. But anyway, this is my next kind of idea. Um, basically, this is a cargo ship. The middle bit is a cargo bay, uh, the rest is fuel. It is an SSTO and it just uses um, uh, it just uses one Rockamax engine and uh, yeah, this was my first attempt. I think it looks quite cool, it looks quite spaceshipy, and it could be easy to bring back, or maybe not, given how tall it is and given how thin it is and how stupidly shaped it is. But still, I think this is a good contender for a reusable SSTO because it looks cool and that's the most important thing. Um, I don't know how good this would be at cargo, at lifting cargo, but this has a very high thrust to weight ratio right now, so I could add a lot more fuel, or I could add some, um, some sort of high efficiency, like, extra stage, I don't know, I've got lots of ideas for what I can do for ships like this, but yeah, this will be another focus of, um, this series, just kind of making futuristic looking ships with, uh, modern tech, with, uh, just modern technology, and this does just make orbit. Um, yes, you must be wondering, Peter, you are a god. You made that rocket go a single stage to orbit, but it is incredibly easy to make a single stage to orbit, and this has succeeded. But I want to do something better with this. This brought nothing to orbit except the empty cargo bay. Um, so yeah, my next attempt is just a little bigger. It's a little taller. It does have something in the cargo bay. Nothing too heavy, just a, just a fuel tank. Um, and not a big fuel tank, just like a half Rocker Max tank, because that was just kind of my test payload. Um, I'm thinking I can do something quite cool with this. Um, it does have some solar panels, just so it doesn't run out of electric charge in space. Um, if I design, decide to slam it back into, back into Kerbin. Um, I do think this could be quite a cool just idea for um, just future rocket design, I guess, where you don't have fairings, because fairings are hard to bring back. But you just have kind of a cargo bay. Um, oh god, I just breathed in really weirdly, I must have sounded really shocked. But yeah, you just have kind of like a cargo base in the center of the rocket. It's probably stupid, it probably would never work, but it's cool in Kerbal Space Program, and it lets me use these really big plane fuselages, which I think aren't very uh, mass efficient, but still, I, I think they... I, actually, I think they're probably relatively similar to normal rocket fuel tanks. But yeah, I think this is a um, pretty nice idea. Obviously, I could just, you know, attach some wings to it, throw on some jet engines, got myself a plane that would work much better, do a Skylon-type system, which I'm probably going to do at some point. Um... But yeah, it's just a nice idea, and the thing with this is it's easy. An SSTO, I mean, you've got a massive plane to fly and bring back, and you've got to land in, maneuver it. But yeah, I, this didn't quite make orbit, so I just give it some of the extra fuel and put it in space. Uh, well, no, put it in orbit even, it's already in space. Um, but I, I only used a little bit too much fuel, and we did get this to orbit, which is not so bad, although I can't bring this thing back now. Uh, because it has no fuel. But anyway, that is the end of the episode. <laughs> I've just been talking. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Cares People Tape. I will see you next time. <laughs>